Lucille Ball, David Jensen, Michael Landon, Mary Martin, Dinah Shore, and Red Skelton cordially invite you to remember TV, the fabulous 50s, with the great stars and shows of those golden years. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, as you probably know, my guest star is Fred Allen. Well, now I've seen everything. <laughs> Hi, Musketeers. Hey, kids. Well, here's look. Oh, look. <laughs> what a revolting development this is. This. <laughs> I'm Percy Duff's house will now be linking pinkies with the Ernie Kovacs show. Where do you like to be at Harbor, Michigan, win for a day? Yes. Why not? I don't know. When the Badgers come to town, the people come from miles around. <laughs> Machines, machines, machines. That's the trouble of the world today. People don't trust themselves. If it's machines say so, it's right. If it's humans say so, it's wrong. Murder, Billy. Murder one. Clown Prince of Comedy, Red Skelton. Welcome to our celebration of the fabulous 50s, when a lot of talented people made television the most important entertainment medium in history. I'll have the pleasure of showing you the great comedians. Michael Landon will be rounding up those wild, wild westerns. Lucille Ball's a natural for situation comedies, and who else but Dinah Shore for the musical variety shows. And David Jansen, he'll touch off the... Um, action dramas, and Mary Martin will bring you the drama and the musical spectaculars. You know, by the time we reached the 50s, America and TV had decided that our love was here to stay. No more sneaking off to store windows or into bars. Instead, the whole family scheduled their activities around their favorite show at home, in front of the new hearth called television. And this was especially true on Tuesday night, because it belonged lock, stock, and laughter to Mr. Television. Lady, please, please. You got all night to make a fool of yourself. I only got an hour. Lady, don't laugh. You may have children of your own one of these days. Don't laugh, lady. This is my nag. What are you, your husband's? Thank you. See? Don't laugh, lady. Don't laugh, please, or I'll tell everybody where you hit that leopard. Ladies and gentlemen. Put you in the spot. It is. Uh, don't I look adorable? Don't I look cute? Now don't walk in front of me. Old bits that you used to do in that old show. Now don't do that. Now stand still and don't do that. Stop with those horny bits. Today you cannot insult the public's intelligence. Well, get off the stage and nobody ever noticed. How about 
that, folks. How about that? <laughs> I demand you stop with these insults. If I'm so bad, how come NBC signed me for 30 years? How come? They signed me for Earl. They got stuck with you. <laughs> now, Uncle... Yes, yes, yes. Now, Uncle Milton, do, do, do. there's a brand new form of comic on TV. What do you mean? No more blacking out a tooth. Turning ankles is uncouth. Can I even mug? And how a... Wowie wee! But Uncle Milty, yes, yes, but Uncle Milty, <laughs> there's one thing on which the both of us agree. Say, no matter what the style, we will try to make him smile. Absolutely, Uncle Milty, a positively misty. Oh, yes, we've both made a barrel of fun. We may not always be funny, but we'll settle for half to bring you a laugh. Side by Uncle Milty led the parade of top comedy stars, attracted by TV's big audiences. People wanted to laugh, and comics came from everywhere, from burlesque and vaudeville, from Broadway and Hollywood, and like myself, from radio. One of them was Bob Hope, who never was and never will be afraid to ruffle a few feathers of the network sacred no-no bird. Personally, I'm very happy to be over here at CBS, ladies and gentlemen. This is rather strange for me. I'm on the major network. <laughs> I really feel like a stranger. I feel like Zsa Zsa at a PTA meeting over here. I don't know. <laughs> but I am awfully thrilled to be here at CBS. That's uh, Crosby and Benny's strong box. And I want to tell you, it's a beautiful place, isn't it? And Television City is right next to Farmer's Market. And it's very convenient. You can lay them here and sell them there. And it really works out. <laughs> Where was I? I don't know. You were sitting there laying an egg. No. <laughs> I don't think you're good for television. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my latest invention. This is a geography book. It's for children, you know. You can do their homework and watch television at the same time. <laughs> you <see> the idea? <laughs> what does the uh, G stand for, Romero? Huh? The Dalek? No, I know. Ramiro Gonzalez, but it says Ramiro G. Gonzalez. What oh. does the G stand for? Ramiro Gonzalez Gonzalez. <laughs> what does your wife call you? Ramiro or Gonzalez? Uh, she called me Pedro. <laughs> Pedro, we could do a great act together. We could make a fortune in vaudeville, you and I. <laughs> what, what would we call our act, you know, if we went out together? The two hot tamales? <laughs> No, we could have called it Gonzalez, Gonzalez, and Marx. That's nice billing. Two people in the act, and I get third place. But what a character, that face on Fred Allen. With those bags under his eyes, he looks like a short butcher peeping over two pounds of liver. <laughs> Fred Allen, you... You ought to be ashamed of yourself, coming in here and trying to get my job away from me. Well, gee, Jack, I had to do something. I've eaten so much of that dog food, they've written a song about me being in a window. <laughs> well, I still say you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Well, I guess I am a heel, Jack. But always remember, next to a, to a heel, you always find a good soul. And I'm quoting from that famous poet, Tom McCann. <laughs> what is that, anyhow? It's my own homemade special punch to cool you off in this hot weather. It consists of a pan of gin, a quart of scotch, a quart of flavor, a pan of rum, some vodka, and a gallon of muscatel. <laughs> All floating around in this bowl of cracked ice. <laughs> you mean that cools you off when you drink it? You don't drink it, you sit in it. <laughs> Gracie, uh... What do you think of television? Oh, I think it's wonderful. You know, I, I hardly ever watch radio anymore. Gracie was right. None of us hardly ever watch radio anymore. Because television was growing stronger and healthier with each belly laugh, along came some of the most exciting new talent in show business. Versatile stars like Steve Allen, who discovered such clever clowns such as uh, Don Knotts, Tom Poston, and Louis Nye. Well, sir, there's that 
familiar theme song, which tells you it's time to meet our man in the street. Hi, ho, Steve Reno. My name is G.B. Morrison, and I work in the munitions factory. I handle high explosives. You say, uh, G.B. Morrison, what does the G.B. stand for? Goodbye. I see. Sir, uh, are you nervous? No. Nope. Uh, what is your name, sir? Still can't remember, huh? No. He loves her, he loves her. Yeah. Oh! Oh! Dr. Frankenstein, uh -huh. he loves her, but she doesn't... ...more dangerous than ever. You're right. Huh? You're very shrewd. Huh? Yes. You don't like him, my dear. But why? After all, he comes from one of the finest families in Transylvania. As a matter of fact, he comes from several of the finest families in Transylvania. But we'll do anything, my child. We'll dress him up in fine clothes. We'll send him to charm school. We, uh, we'll even give him a nose job. Anything. Oh, nice. Well, I don't just stand there, you oaf. Yes, you're an oaf. This is a woman, you understand that? A woman. You have to woo her to win her. Go on, woo her, woo her. Woo, woo. No, no. <laughs> well, thank you, Doctor. Doctor, maybe, maybe a little romantic music might help. Huh? You're very helpful. Yes. Igor, romantic music, come. Coming, coming, Master. <laughs> Play something very tender. Here we go, there. Put it there. Now hold it. the unexpected. Even today, his way out has found a whole new audience with the kids in schools and colleges.
in your show of shows. That was a Saturday night blockbuster with Sid Caesar, Carl Reiner, Howie Morris, and Imogene Coca. Duchess dances with me. Take it easy, boys. There's enough for everybody. <laughs> okay, Duchess. What do you say? You and me get out of here. All right. Let's go swimming. Yeah, swimming. <laughs> sure. I always wear a bathing suit under my gown. <laughs> Doesn't everybody? I like that. First time I ever went to a dance without my bathing suit. I'll see you on the beach in a few minutes. Well, God, it looks like my buddy boy's giving you the treatment, making time with the Duchess. Listen to me, Frankie boy. I'm biding my time. Because that's the kind of guy I'm. Out here on this beach tonight, I can forget the dance hall. With all the smoke and the noise and the dancing. <laughs> you know, Duchess, I have only known you a short while. But I must ask you one question. Yes, Marty? <laughs> And boy, you couldn't ask for a bigger finish than the great one himself, Jackie Gleason with Art Carney. Just like Damon and Pythias, the wonderful friendship this is. You are my morale. You are a tonic for my morale. And we paddle up life canal. It's guys like you who make it swell. I think you're really great. And we're not your own way to You carry lots of weight, lots of weight, lots of weight, lots of weight. Another gem. You can have my hat, my friend. Yes, no. My coat, my gun. My hat, my bag. My boat, my gum. Anytime you find you're up a tree. I tell you, feel that all went out all day. You know, if I hadn't have followed my first love comedy, I would have liked to have been one of those TV cowboys. You know, I could have ridden the range like Roy Rogers. Or I could have been a sharpshooter like the Rifleman. Go! But you want to know the truth? I could have been able to write, act, direct, like our Western authority. Your next host, Michael Landon. The Western is an art form indelibly stamped, made in America. From our nation's beginning, it has been captured in the paintings and sculpture of men of such genius as Russell and Remington, in the stories of Bret Hart and Zane Gray. Good against evil, one man alone facing his destiny on a deserted street for that dramatic showdown. Now, the Western film moved our art form forward, with such movies as Stagecoach and High Noon. And naturally, when television rode into the entertainment scene, the Westerns top of the popularity polls. Are you silver, boy? With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early West. The Lone Ranger rides again. It was the kids who were responsible for the first overwhelming success of Westerns on TV. The Roy Rogers Show, starring Roy Rogers, King of the Cowboys, Trick.
Krieger, his golden Palomino, and Dale Evans, Queen of the West. Kids, westerns were quick to grow up. And along came a whole new breed of TV cowboys, like Hugh O'Brien as Wyatt Earp. Now, it'll be an even fight if you come into town. We'll lose men, and so will you. All Dave wants is me. I'm the one your crowd is sore at, not Wichita. So let you and me settle it, Mr. Clements. Get off your horse. Not here. When I drop you, I don't want 50 bullets in my gizzard. And Jim Arness as Marshal Dillon. Howdy, mister. What do you men want? We took two days to trail you. Looks like we caught you instead of you catching us, Marshal. Hold it. I told you you ain't alone. Get over here. Well, I'll be doggone. What are you doing here, McCall? It's, it's camp. Camp, isn't it? Arizona. Three years ago, and I ain't been back since. But how come an old outlaw like you is running with a U.S. Marshal? A what? You can't be taking you in. You're still carrying your gun. I didn't see any reason to tell you about it. Get your horse, McCall, if you want to go with us. Well, now, wait a minute here, Camp. <laughs> what do you got in mind? Well, there's three of us. Four of us now. We'll leave them to rot. All right, let's get this over with. W were you after them, Matt? I don't even know who they are. Don't even know us. What a liar. Get over on this side, McCall. You can saddle up later. Listen, uh, Kemp, you know me. I was never very strong about lawmen. You know that. Well, I'd reckon. Well, it just seems like three against one. I don't go for that. More or less four. What are you saying, McCall? Well, I was just thinking maybe it might be a little more to say three against two. First, you can stay out of this. Well, I know I can, but I was always a little contrary about it. The TV Western was copied and recopied until there were almost as many horses as viewers. At one point, there were actually 39 popular Western series on the air in a given week. And each Western hero toted his own creative character touch in the form of his own special weapon. Loaded pistols and loaded dives. Take my warning or pay the price. Cause it ain't healthy to try it twice. Loaded pistols and loaded dives. Now this kept going on for quite a while. They made an awful dent in Larry's pile. Reached down in his boot and got a ten. And then he shot the ten and lost again. He stopped the game and said, I'm country five. But still I know you took me for a ride. I also know the rules are plainly writ. But I'm about to change them up a bit. Loaded pistol and loaded die. Take my warning or pay the price. Da 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 Loaded pistols and loaded dice. The good guys of the fabulous 50s not only had a unique assortment of weapons, they knew how to use them when the bad guys showed up. Where did all those Indians come from? shot him in the back. 
Now there's no use in any more bloodshed. That's four enough, Count. Look, oh, Mr. Bodie. You're the hardest dying feather I ever seen. In the final moments of any western, there's always the customary ride off into the sunset. Well, in our Bonanza pilot, we tried a sort of musical comedy exit. And for the first and thankfully last time, sang the lyrics to the Bonanza theme. I've got a flair for women everywhere. Bonanza! Bonanza! Hey, hey, hey! And when I call on any gal at all, she's gonna welcome Too me. Much noise. I'm not afraid of any pretty maid. Bonanza! Bonanza! When I give a kiss to any pretty miss, she'll learn a lot from me. One for four, four for one, this we guarantee. We got a right to pick a little fight. Bonanza, bonanza. <laughs> if anyone fights any one of us, he's got a fight with me. In 1953, when we were all wondering about the price of that doggy in the window, learning how to play Scrabble and craning our necks to watch all the new widescreen movies, situation comedies were big television treats. The Life of Riley, first on radio and then on TV, was a forerunner of the great family sitcoms. And the first star who played Riley was a much younger, much thinner, Jackie Gleason. Thinking fast. You know, no heart. Flippish old God. <laughs> oh, no, that wasn't the doctor, that was the butcher. I took that message. The beef heart. <laughs> the doctor. Riley, you dope? Oh, this beef doll. <laughs> oh, I thought you sure are mixed up. Mixed up? He's nuts. Oh, Daddy, how could you make such a mistake? <laughs> you mean that I'm gonna live? <laughs> what a revolting development this is. You know, you couldn't ask for a better guide to the wacky, wonderful world of sitcom than our next hostess. She's wondrously wacky herself, which is why we all adore her. Lucille Ball. We'll return to more television, the fabulous 50s, in a moment. On television, in motion pictures, age or in person, we always love Lucy. Lucille Ball. I remember the fabulous 50s. Boy, do I remember them. There was a whole lot of pretty crazy stuff shaking the American scene. Hula hoops, ducktails, and beatniks, rock and roll, all that and more was fair game for television. Especially in my territory, the sitcom. Of course, for all the fads and foibles of the 50s, things were somehow more innocent, more naive. Not at all like the situation comedies of today. We swapped jobs, not mates. Busing meant vacations, not segregation. And we'd never have dared build humor around funerals, or being impotent, bigotry, or prostitution. It's true, television has grown up and that's fine, but you know something? Funny is still funny, even when the subject isn't provocative or controversial. All it has to be is human. And in the fabulous 50s, we had a wonderful time making fun of our human frailties. One prime source was the family situation comedies. I know we don't have to name all the beautiful people who brought them to life, but. Perhaps we can remind you of some of those wonderfully warm moments of comedy. You know, it's none of my business, but don't you think taking riding lessons is a pretty expensive way to meet a girl? Yeah, especially since you don't need the lessons. Oh, well, we made a deal. See, I'm going to teach her how to play the guitar, and she's going to teach me how to ride. <laughs> what happens if she finds out you can ride? She'll probably hit him over the head with a guitar. <laughs> you know, you're kidding, uh, but your mother hit me with a canoe paddle once. Is she hit you over the head? No, a little lower down. On the shoulder? No, a little further south. I gave a hint. He was bending over at the time. Well, did uh, 
Anything happen to anybody today? I got an anthropology exam coming up. Mm -hmm. Tough one? Yeah, I'll tell you. It's all about ancient myths and superstitions. Well, those primitive people sure were stupid. How do you mean? Well, they were so superstitious, they wouldn't... They wouldn't make a move unless they performed some ritual. Well, good luck on your exam. Well, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. The way I got it figured out, I, I should come out with about a B. I've got a rabbit's foot somewhere, if uh, you could use that, too. What have I got a surprise for you? Yeah, well, I got a surprise for you, too. Now, you see here, young man. Daddy, don't you dare lay a hand on this child. Was you gonna land? Well, you look like you were. Do you know you women are crazy? <laughs> You're really crazy. I was a perfectly peaceful man this morning looking for the shoes, the brown ones with the buckles. <laughs> That's all I had on my mind. And all of a sudden, you got me all steamed up about disciplining the boy, punish the boy, and as soon as the curly-haired little darling walks in the room, you hover over him like a mother eagle on a nest. <laughs> There are right and wrong methods of disciplining children. Yes, Your Majesty. We will use your methods. You go ahead. You discipline the child. Rusty, if you ever leave your room in this terrible condition again, I'm going to be very angry with you. <laughs> Boy, what a cruel punishment. The sitcom set naturally had its own individual stars who led the laughs week after week during the fabulous 50s always surrounded by a company of indispensable supporting players. They covered the comedy scene from that G.I. Romeo Phil Silvers to the meek and always amusing Wally Cox. And to America's favorite quick-witted school marm, Eve Arden. Wow! Look at all the girls, huh? I'm supposed to worry about you now with all the girls. I just hope there's enough of me to go around. <laughs> Hold it. Oh, yes, before I was in the Army, I was a refrigerator repairman. I always found that most of the trouble was caused by the induction. Excuse me, Private. Aren't you from my hometown? Oh, are you from Cedar Rapids, too? Well, didn't you used to fix my mother's refrigerator? I could have. Oh, your work. name is... Uh, Andy Koppelmeyer. Right on the tip of my... <laughs> well, Andy, what are you doing here? Mm -hmm. Why aren't you at the Cedar Rapids get-together at the Paradise Barn Grill? Oh, Cedar Rapids get-together? I didn't know they were having oh, one. All the fellows are there. You remember, uh, uh, Shorty Richard? Shorty Askerbot. And, uh, uh, Dugan. He's there. <laughs> and, uh... Oh, I don't know who you mean. Oh, I forgot that. You don't know him. He just moved to town. Well, where'd you say you were? In Paradise Barn Bridge. You can't miss it. It's just a few blocks up the street. Here's the place. Aren't you going to the Cedar Rapids get-together? I'd much rather get together with you. <laughs> Is your room ready? Oh, goodness, no. Oh, goodness, no. I came over to see you about some rags. Oh, sure, I got it. Oh, thank you so much. This is a good one. Well, uh, 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 well, all you need. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Come on, Mr. Rusty. Get up. Well, I'm afraid I'll need a lot. All you need. Oh, well. <laughs> The moon rises at exactly 7.20 p.m. At 7.21, you and Mr. Boynton will sneak through an ivy-covered archway in the Snodgrass backyard. And when you get through the archway, you come to a cute little bird bath. And guess what's in the bird bath? A dirty owl. <laughs> oh, not a pair of prized lovebirds. Now, what do you suppose Mr. Boynton will do when he sees the lovebirds in the bird bath? Well, if I know Mr. Boynton, he'll close his eyes and howl. <laughs> no, well, he'll watch them to see what they're doing. And what do you suppose they are doing? What? They're rubbing their beaks together. And why do you suppose they're rubbing their beaks together? They're trying to set fire to a Boy Scout? <laughs> And then there was this comedy situation, which even my writers hadn't anticipated. Perhaps you remember when I found myself in the middle of an advanced state of pregnancy. Pistachio, here's your spoon. 
Which is that? Hot fudge. Pour it on top. <laughs> That's right. Ooh. Now pour that right on top of this. But honey, these are sardines. <laughs> Some critics were inclined to carp about the bubble-headed plots of situation comedy during the Fabies. There was no arguing about the integrity, warmth, and affection of Robert Young, Jane Wyatt, and their family in Father Knows Best. A wild pharaoh. Just listen to him. What do you say, Kathy? I don't know what he said. I only know what I tweet to him. What are we going to do with him now? He's not sick anymore. I'm going to keep him. He's my very own bird. Well, Kitten, if we keep Mr. Quigley, we'll have to put him in a cage. I know. Well, I suppose we could put the cage by the window where he could look through the bars. Maybe he could see the other birds free and hopping around. But I wonder if he'd be happy. Gee, I wonder. Kathy, remember yesterday when it rained all day and you wanted to go outside and play, but you couldn't leave the house? Remember how unhappy you were? Imagine Mr. Quigley being locked up like that all the rest of his life, just like in prison. Daddy? Yes, kitten? Open the window. That was one of the most popular songs of the early 50s. It typifies the musical variety programs which gave the Westerns a real run for their money. And when I say variety, this is what I mean. When you love, oh, Colleen, this time, with every note, your heart will flow. And if you say, over the sea. And when you wait for me, take my tip, they're all moto hip in Italy. I will hire it to chance as my friends. Oh, they think the yes, beat. I do believe I do indeed. The rich ones all remember what they call legends. Yes, ah, for me, Doc, take a plane. Oh, my friend, go to Siam. In Bangkok today, round the clock, oh, well, they all like the jam. But now, what is Jesus? Indian song. The Amazon Take one bar And all of them are Welcome Up the equator Up to the pole If I bought a wing and ring ding ding A wing and that rock 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 and roll From the north to the south In a word, they were dynamite. And for more of the same, your hostess for the great, great musical moments from the fabulous 50s will be Miss Dinah Shore. Getting to know you, getting to feel free and easy. When I am with you, getting to know what to say. Haven't you noticed, suddenly I'm
earlier, Red Skelton was talking about taking that first big plunge into the exciting world of television. I know just how he felt, because I jumped in just about the same time myself, right off the high diving board. And after that first big splash, I, I, I somehow got my breath, and somehow we all learned how to swim. And the water was fine. Sometimes. Television continued to grow in the 50s, and so did the musical variety form. The shows were exciting for both the viewer and the performer. Well, our excitement could have been confused occasionally with an emotion called sheer terror, because our shows were live. It was kind of like doing a trapeze act without the net. No matter what happened, and almost always everything did, you kept right on singing and smiling and singing and smiling and dancing and smiling and smiling. In those golden years, variety became a very important word in our television vocabulary. It brought us a wide range of great musical stars. Just like my swinging time. friend, Tony Bennett. I found you just in time Before you came, my time was running low I was lost, the losing dice were tossed My bridges all crossed, nowhere to go in time you found me just in time and changed my lonely life that lovely day and my cool singing friend Peggy Lee marvelous do marvelous for work black glorious glamorous and that old
gourmet's heartthrob, Steve Lawrence. Burnett and Joe Stafford. duos. How about this, Tusi? The great B. Lily and what's her name? lost her wig, and in case you didn't notice, her pantaloons. Hardly anybody loses their pantaloons these days. A wonderful world of top personalities filled the television screen during the 50s. What a great vaudeville bill that would have been for the palace in the old days. And now, ladies and gentlemen, on with a really big shoe. And now, the lucky seven songs of the week with Dorothy Collins, Snooky Lanson, June Valley, Russell Arm. Did you ever sleep at the foot of the bed when the weather was a whizzing cold? When the wind was a whistling around the house and the moon just yellow as gold? You give your good warm mattress up to Aunt Lizzie and Fred. Too many kin folks on a bad night and, and you went, went to, to the, the foot, foot of the bed. bed.
said. I tried to reach the moon, but when I got there, background music of the great action series of the 50s. Hold it! You throw that punch and you're in trouble. Don't hear! Talk about 
about your cliffhangers. Well, one of my favorite men of action, David Jansen, will be here with more details in just a few moments. Stand by for action drama with the Untouchables, Richard Diamond, and more. Ladies and gentlemen, once a fugitive, he now operates with equal success on the side of the law. Here is television's popular action star, David Jansen. Some of the people who wonder for a living often wonder why the TV action drama series was so popular. Well, the fact is, they're going just as strong and steady today as they did in the fabulous 50s. Now, maybe that's because these shows give us a chance to get away from the everyday and into a different kind of world, a more romantic lifestyle. In the 50s, the TV screens literally exploded with gunfire. When the smoke cleared, the big hit shows established themselves as the forerunners of action series we enjoy today. The government agency in action. Shows like the FBI got their start with the unforgettable untouchables. Robert Taylor's Detectives was the prototype for the big city squad room setting of Kojak. And today's Columbo and Policewoman all began in the days of the dramatic series Naked City. Well, a man can't spend a lifetime with criminals and stay tender and wide-eyed, lad. No, a cop keeps the PC. He protects the weak and the innocent. Listen to me, son. Let me give you the hard facts. When you put on that uniform, you're a marked man. Marked by the supercritical eyes of the public. Marked by the guns of every hoodlum you chase into a corner. Murder one. The oh, guy yeah. last night, 327 Maple Street, no, straight. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. Look, I told you I took the car. I, I had a date. Now that's it. Steel shavings from Strager's safe were found on the car flooring. Now come off it. All right. But I had nothing to do with the killing. I stayed in the car. Now that's all I did. All right, if that's it, I'll make a deal. Good deal. But I want a complete cop out. A cop? I'm giving you a break, Billy. But in just five seconds, I'm going to forget the meaning of the word. Federal officers, clear where you are. Hey, what's going on? Federal officers, come out with your hands up. Every public cop on TV, there was the private eye. And in the 50s, there was no end to the variety of personalities and backgrounds for these solitary gentlemen. So we had the suave Peter Gunn, the hard-boiled Richard Diamond, both paving the way for shows like The Good Files and Harry O.
I hate men who know too much. They're always in my way. I think you have got me. Lieutenant. Hello, Sam. It's me. What's happened? Everything. I just got a run in my stocking. Oh, that's very important, Samuel. Is there anything else? You pick up a pair of nylons for me. Now, take a good look at those lovely legs. They walked a young lady straight down the road to start him. Or maybe you already know that my delightful assistant, Sam, was Mary Tyler Moore. Of all the action dramas of the fabulous 50s, one remains a true classic, leading the way for all the series that take place in the courtroom arena. Perry Mason. Miss Howard, have you ever seen this before? If your honor, please. What possible connection can there be between that, whatever it is, and the murder of George Lutz? Inquiry is getting pretty far afield. If your honor, please. This is exactly the field we should be in, and I can prove it. Proceed. Miss Howard, have you ever seen that before? No. Perhaps you saw it in a different condition, taken apart, just pipes and wood. I'm not sure. Do you know what a shooting stand is? All right, Miss Howard, let's get down to cases. Mr. Granger gave you a gun. The weapon used to murder George Lutz. You returned a different gun. You knew Mrs. Granger was going to be on that hilltop. You took a shooting stand apart, destroying evidence. If you are not trying to protect someone, then you murdered George Lutz. No, no, I didn't. Uh, it was an accident. It was Mrs. Granger. She was supposed to be the one. You mean you deliberately aimed at Mrs. Granger and Lutz got in the way? No, I didn't say that. I didn't shoot Mr. Lutz. Then who did? What are you sitting there for letting me take the blame? Come up here, tell them. He did it. Herbert, Herbert Dean. Bailey, hold that man. I would have made a million dollars. He did it. It was all his idea. Mancini's score for Days of Wine and Roses represents the golden era of television drama. When new faces, new names, new talents created brilliant productions. Case in point, the Hallmark Hall of Fame production of Shaw's Captain Brassbound's Conversion, starring Greer Garson. Now watch closely for one of today's superstars. I consider that you have more sense in your wedding ring finger than the British Admiralty has in its whole constitution. Well, of course I have, Captain. Will you say the standard things? Prisoners coming aboard, ma'am. Who sent you in to say that? The British lady's orders, sir. Oh, but I, I didn't give orders, Captain. I just asked him. He has such a nice face. Don't you think he has, Captain? That nice face belongs to Robert Redford in one of his first television appearances. Now next, Mary Martin pays tribute to those great dramas and musical spectaculars. The golden years of television were at their brightest and shiniest best in the rich field of drama. Week after week, the audiences witnessed the birth and growth of giants. Talented young writers, directors, and producers who brought us shows that are television legends. Studio One, Playhouse 90, Hallmark Hall, and all the rest. And wonder of wonders, they were all live every single one an opening night and played to bigger audiences than most broadway plays reach in an entire run were you at home the night the stars came out did you see the first tv performance of jack lemon rod steiger grace kelly 
James Dean. Golden years, platinum is more like it. And what theater? All original for TV and unfolding live before your very eyes. The miracle worker, no time for sergeants. We saw them first on television, and then they went to Broadway and to the screen. Marty, days of wine and roses, judgment at Nuremberg, and a prize-winning teleplay by Rod Serling, Requiem for a Heavyweight. There is a tragic moment when Jack Palance discovers his fight manager, Keenan Wynn, has bet against him, while Ed Wynn sympathizes. You bet against me? Mish, why did you bet against me? Would it make any difference, kid? If I hopped my left foot and bet it on you, would it make any difference? You're not a winner anymore. There's only one thing left. Make a little on the losing. Fink. You dirty fink, Mish. You dirty, lousy fink. Because I stood out there and I took it for you. I got to pay for it like this. Like, like this, huh, Mish? You know, in all the dirty, crummy 14 years I fought for you, all the shame, Mish. Not one round, not one single minute. You know, I feel ashamed. I'd have, gone, I'd have gone into any ring barehanded against a guy with a cleaver. And that wouldn't have hurt me near as much as this. Listen to me, will you? Sorry. Army, I didn't I didn't hear. Oh, that's, Army, sorry. That's all right, Mountain. I rated that. Oh, dear God. I rated it, Mountain. I Army. shouldn't have been here. Oh, sorry. Listen, go, kid. Go and leave. Did I hurt Take you? what precious little you've got left and go, will you? Did I hurt you? Oh, I'll be all right, Mount. Go. I'm sorry, Army. Please go, kid, will you? I had it coming to me. Sorry. Go. Go, Mount. Imagine that sort of drama was ours every week. And then there were the specials, the spectaculars of the fabulous 50s. Television events like the musical version of the Pulitzer Prize play, Our Town. Frank Sinatra played you the stage manager. You will like the folks you meet in our town. The folks you meet on any in our town Pick out any cottage White or brown There are all the feeling With that the young lovers were Eva Marie Saint and Paul Newman.
hit song too. Love and marriage, love and marriage, go together like the horse and carriage. Dad was told by mother, you can't have one, you can't none, you can't have one without the other. Not only did TV create great drama and fabulous musicals, it also brought the Broadway stage right smack into our living rooms with such spectacular productions as Kiss Me, Kate. I had the pleasure of recreating Annie Get Your Gun for television. And then there was Wonderful Town, starring a great artist and a very dear lady, Rosalind Russell. In this scene, she lit up our TV screens with her own special comedy genius. Any fellow speak English? Si, English. Oh, good, good, good. Well, now, what do you think of America? American dance, conga. No, 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 conga's a Brazilian dance. No, Cubano. No, 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 no. conga, American dance. You show conga? If I show you, will you give me the interview? Okay. It's easy. It's easy. All I got to do is go, a one, a two, a three, kick like that. One, a two, a three, kick. Ah, see. Kick out like that. See. Kick it down. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. accepted a very special invitation to stay home and watch the first evening with Fred Astaire when he introduced his lovely dancing partner, Barry Chase, and scooped up nine Emmy Awards along the way.
won its share of awards for fine classical music, as well as contemporary with artists like our own musical ambassador, Louis Armstrong, our beloved Satchmo. Grab your coat, grab your hat, be your worry, some little step. Just direct your feet on the sunny side of the street. Can't you hear that bit of bad thing? The happy tune is your step. Life's so sweet on the sunny side of the street. I used to walk in the shade with the blues on the rain. But I'm not afraid, baby. My robe grows on me. If I never have a cent, I'll be rich as rock fellow. With gold at my treaders on the same side. Each of us has a special moment in our lives. For us performers, it is often shared with our audiences. My own came on a Christmas Eve in the fabulous 50s when 63 million men, women, and children shared with me the magic of Peter Pan. Do you believe? Do you truly believe? Oh, good. Then anything is possible. Now think, lovely thoughts. Think, lovely thoughts. Fishing. Hopscotch. Candy. Picnics. Summer. Candy. Sailing. for all those you love and we had no time for. We love them too, all of them. From TV, the fabulous 50s.
love to spend this hour with you as friend to friend I'm sorry it's true I'm telling you just how I feel I hope you feel that way too Good night, Mrs. Calabash. We're heavy. Good night, folks. So long. Good night, everyone. Good night. How about saying good night? Oh, good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, folks. Good night. Good night, and bless your little pea ticket. Good night. And now I see by the hands of Big Ben that it's time to be moseying along. That's uh, Big Ben Strauss, our engineer. <laughs> Good night, and may God bless. Good night. Thank you.